Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 19 Love Me One here with the Shade Tree Survivals. Uh, Saturday evening, uh, February 3rd, 2018. It is 6:50 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, been a busy day on my end. My buddy Stan, 80 years old. His wife passed away late last year. Her children treated him like crap. He's all alone. Um, his only son was uh, born with a birth defect. He passed away when he was 17, and so he basically uh, kidnapped to adopt me. <laughs> he got robbed while he was in the freaking hospital. Hey, oh my God, I hate people. Um, so he was in the hospital. He went in because he was dehydrated, malnourished, because he's a knucklehead. And he don't want to. He don't want to. Take the time to cook decent food, and he, and he eats like a waffle or a bowl of cereal, and he thinks that's going to keep him alive. And I said, buddy, you don't get some greens and some vegetables and some fruit and protein, like meat and stuff in your diet, you're going to be malnourished again. And what they're going to do is rule you incompetent to take care of yourself, and they're going to take your house to sell it, and they're going to put you in a nursing home. Yes, your will, and ain't nothing you can do about it if you don't do better and take care of yourself. So anyway, the only thing they stole, though, it was weird. They left his flat screen TV, which is an older model. It's probably five years old, six years old, maybe a little older. Um, he, doesn't have, he didn't have a DVD player. He just had old VCR. I give him. Um, but they stole all his pots and pans, all his silverware, all the big spoons and stuff. It's like... It's like it's some teenagers or something, some new, new, you know, setting up household or something, playing house. A um, couple of little cameras, old cameras his wife had, you know, a few odds and ends like that, but they don't have jewelry and stuff, so they didn't mess with any anything else hardly, but, you know, other than rifling through his closets and all, but it just made me so damn mad, I couldn't hardly see straight. But man, they didn't have nothing to eat, cook on. Um, they left all the plates and stuff, but they got all those damn pots, but he had some nice stuff, copper bottom pots that his wife had bought. Um, so I went up there and I bought him some inexpensive pots and pans and spoons and forks and stuff like that and got him some good food. Um, stuff I, that, that, that he'll eat, but, you know, it wasn't the greatest damn thing. I told him, I said, you need some greens, some spinach, some collards, some mustard greens, whatever, some greens. You need some damn greens and you freaking die, man. Um. My little light here wants to fight with me. But anywho, that, that's uh, what I did this morning. That's the reason I hadn't put any videos up other than that little short one. I had finished it and didn't hit publish before I left. That's the reason it was so late getting up. But anywho, to the point of this video, I did stop by Tail Spinners, which is a local gun dealer that I deal with. They're really good people, honest, decent. Um, it's a smaller deal, small dealership. They built an indoor range. It's really doing good. I was really surprised. Um but I was talking to him, told him what the deal was about the channel, about the get the uh, video series, um, about the giveaway and so forth. I wanted his input on the, uh, I've never transferred a, a gun I've never bought from like an online dealer and had it transferred to me. I've never bought one across state lines and had it brought to me either. So I didn't know what the process would be and he told me uh, there's a $30 fee. The gun's going to be $550. I decided to go with an American-made auto ordinance. Um, the manufacturer of the Thompson submachine gun, a.k.a. Tommy gun, that made the 20s roar uh, after the United States Congress and Senate outlawed alcohol sales and they stopped manufacture of alcohol. I don't remember which amendment that was, uh, maybe the 13th or something. It's been so many years ago, I don't remember, but... Um, the uh, mob took over, and the hill people took over, and they started making it in the hills, and the mob started bring, importing it in, from Canada and Mexico and everywhere else, and people were dying left and right. They were shooting the hell out of each other. The competition was something fierce. I mean, so if anybody thinks that the modern-day drug dealers are bad, I mean, they're, they're pretty damn violent and horrible and terrible and all that. It ain't nothing new. There is nothing new under the damn sun, folks. Uh, the 1920s was a hell of a bad decade. Um, and then, of course, you had the Great Depression that set in. I think it was either 28 or 29, and it just went on and on and on. They say the the uh, 
The federal government says that the uh, Great Depression did not officially end until the 50s. Um, that's a hell of a thing, but uh, yeah, it was. It, it, they manufactured that Thompson submachine gun, and they have a really good 1911. Okay, um, 550 bucks. It's a GI model. There's nothing special about it, but this is the great thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is a 1911. You can customize the hell out. You can put new sights on it, new grip panels. Uh, you can put on your different the different types of um, tang safety. The beaver tail. You you'll have to alter the frame to do that, but it can be done. You can put on different mainspring housing. You can put on um, different. You can put into different types of triggers, different style of triggers, lengths of triggers. You can go in and put all the brand new fire control group. Um, the uh, slide lock, you can put in different types of slide lock. You put in different types of freaking magazine catch, the magazine release. Um, you can put on any kind of damn sight you want, just about it. Um, even though the, the front is not, it's not beaver tailed, doesn't have the cut in the, the, the uh, slide to do that. If you are willing to pay the money, that's how they all start out before they make that cut. And you can have it cut and have a... Uh, a front sight inserted but you don't necessarily have to do that you know they make sights that uh, pin into the slide of the original style 1911 without having to be dovetailed so that's not a big deal either and uh, here soon I'm gonna have that tool that will uh, 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 mash that little tenion flat so that the front side will stay put and of course the rear side you know the only thing on that one um, a Bomar style adjustable sight on the original type, you'd have to have the uh, slide machine in order to accept that. But to 1911, you customize that some gun. You start out with a basic gun, not spend a whole lot of money. We can tune it up with the cheap parts that are already in the gun, and have a later date. Use like I love this gun. I want to keep this gun. I'm going to use this gun to shoot and all. You can go up and upgrade the living hell out of it and turn it into, because they all start out the same damn way. Except the race guns, of course. But they all start out the same damn way. So you can customize the hell out of it, whoever the winner is. Now, I just done another video for this, and I missed one thing. I want whoever wins. And uh, at this time, everybody who's donated does put up videos. Um, one Mr. Gas Gas One doesn't put up many videos, but he does put up videos. All I want is somebody, when you get the gun, to put up a cell phone video for the other guys and the other viewers showing that you got it. And then just shoot me a link or just let me know and then I'll make a link and I'll put it in the description box of the last video in this series uh, that we're going to do. Um, the, the series is going to be 21 parts uh, start to finish. Um, why so many parts? Because I'm going to break it down. So if you want to look, see how to tension the extractor, there's going to be a video, very, very short video on how to tension the extractor, what the proper tensioning of the extractor looks like and is, um, how to polish the feed ramp, how to polish the throw to the barrel, how to check if you have a slide lock that, op that locks the gun back, the slide back before you're empty, you know, how to what check, you know, how to check it to find out what the problem is. Where Because you can have interference with the slide lock and the bullet tip, I mean the actual bullet of the cartridge, okay, the way it's in the magazine. Because um, when you're looking at the magazine, this portion, this portion of the bullet, can interfere with the slide lock if the slide lock's not manufactured correctly. That's what kind of problems you have when you buy cheap guns. Okay, um, you know, checking different. Uh, you know, like I said, each component we're going to be working on and tuning and polishing. Everything we're going to do, I'm going to have a separate, independent part. And. Uh, I don't know why I never thought about it. The GoPro doesn't have the issues with the with the um, the focus that the Canon does. So I am going to shoot it with the GoPro and the Canon at the same exact time, so we get the best possible quality. It won't be none of this phasing in and out with the damn 
um, with the focus. Just let's hope the damn GoPro keeps going. So far, it's, it's fantastic. And it's got a remote control to it. So you guys look forward to it. I'm sorry the video is already over 10 minutes long. But uh, yeah, like I said, I stopped at the gun store. We got the gun picked out. The Thompson, uh, not Thompson, the Auto Ordnance 1911. GI model, 5 inch government model. The flat out just GI model. It ain't no bells and whistles on it. But like I said, hey, you can always go back and add ambidextrous safety, uh, extended safety, extended slide lock. Uh, flat mainspring housing, checkered, uh, uh, chain link fence looking checkering. I mean, you name it. You name it. You start out with a basic gun, and as you uh, get more proficient with it and des your desires, you hey, you can go in there and put some freaking uh, Punisher grips on it, Death Head, uh, the freaking Grim Reaper, uh, freaking Pokemon. I mean, whatever you want, somebody somewhere makes ivory. Okay? Not real ivory, but fake ivory, but uh shit stainless steel grips if that's what you want somebody somewhere makes it in 1911 you can customize any damn way you want if it was mine first thing i'd do is change out the entire fire control group all right i'd put the correct length trigger for my finger which is a medium that's what i'm fixing to do to the coat combat unit um brand new disconnect sear and hammer from either wilson combat or one of the other guys all hardened tool steel correctly made correct no mim crap throw that mim crap not even i wouldn't throw it away i'd keep it as an absolute emergency spare but that's the first thing i would do with it i'd get those three components put in the gun i wouldn't worry about it no damn more that and the slide lock slide lock is the only other thing that would uh, could possibly fail and cause your gun to, to die that and the extractor on, with the cheap parts so you know, but that's, you know, it's like I said, you can, you can customize them. Um, and that's the great, wonderful thing about the 1911. You can make that thing. You can Cerakote it. You can do any damn thing. You can camouflage it. You can make that damn thing. I saw one that had a, a zombie motif, had a bright neon green and black. And gaudy as hell. Maybe that's what you like. It's your gun when you win it. You can make it any damn thing you want. And, uh. You know, I, I like mine the way it come. I wish that I'd have got the wood stock with the, th the finger grooves so it has some a little class. But I just I just like the design. I don't care about all that bling, you know. But that's just me. It's just me. I don't do I don't do watches. I don't do jewelry, rings, necklaces. I don't do none of that crap. No earrings. I ain't never had an earring. Don't care. Just has zero value to me. You know. So, I'd rather have a, a ratchet so I can actually do something with it versus a stupid damn, you know, gold, the value goes up and down. But if somebody's car breaks down and you know how to fix it, your value just went up. It's those, one of those skills. It's like I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, use your noodle. You know, you can't eat gold. And in a time where food is and uh, survival is a is the concern of the moment what the hell good is gold going to do or silver or any rest of that crap skills ladies and gentlemen you know i get fired tomorrow i have no high school diploma but i will not be unemployed i'll be a handyman i'll go back to security guard i can go dig graves again i can work on cars i can do lawn mow lawn i can cut trees i can clear land i can farm i can run a tractor backhoe hey i was a grave digger for two damn years baby i can run the hell out of a backhoe now, am i the greatest thing ever but no am i proficient enough to get the job done eventually uh yeah so you know there you go but anywho thank you very much for watching sorry i'm so long-winded you know how i am and uh that is the thing i'm going to cut out um when i do this series it's gonna be right to the damn point and like the uh the tedious work like polishing the feed ramp I'm going to fast forward it and so forth. That's another great thing about that GoPro that you can do. You can fast forward, speed it up, slow it down, all kinds of things. Cut out all that crap and I'm make them very short to the point. Let you see what I'm doing and then get fast forward to all the minutia. Like I did on the uh, Digging In for Defense series of videos. Uh, the Foxhole. Because that took hours. Okay. But anywho, thank you very much for watching. 
Mac Daddy 1911 made one here. Thank you guys who have donated. Thank you guys who want to see the video. Thank you guys who would love to donate, but ain't got the money. I understand. I work for a living too. Y'all take care. Thank you very much.